It's Steve on the Guru Brew 2. I have a question here. This is a CNC question. This one comes from Jim. He's watched my video on reworking my old CNC machine, and I talked about anti-backlash nuts. He was wondering if I could provide more information on how I built them. He is building his own CNC machine using MDF and drive shafts of half inch, 13 turns per inch steel rod. Have great videos. Yeah, sure, uh, Jim. Um, this is actually the shaft out of my homemade CNC machine. And these are my homemade backlash nuts. Let me explain what backlash is first of all. Imagine that this steel rod is in the machine. This is secured at one end. And this is secured at the other end with my stepper motor, my motor. And then this part is hooked to my axis. In this case, this is my Y axis. So these two ends are secured and this is allowed to move. So when this rod turns, this thing can go back and forth. And that's, of course, how the CNC machine works. What happens, though, with threaded rod, there's a little bit of slop. Now, I just threaded this little nut on here. This is a half inch. And I threaded it on here just to demonstrate. I'll get a close-up of this in just a minute. But there's a little bit of wiggle room. And what happens is, when I move this way, all is fine. But then when I turn back the other way, there's a little hesitation there because of that slop. And that hesitation may cause tolerance problems, even though it's very small. But uh, it still, nevertheless, causes what's called backlash. And these are anti-backlash nuts. The way that they work is both of these pieces of material are threaded. And then the the bolts in between pull these apart so that it takes up the slot. Let's go ahead and put this on the table and I'll get a close-up of it. Before we do that, I want to bring up a web page of a professional looking anti-backlash nut. Here's what you typically get if you went out and purchased one. And um, you can see that these are hollow part with springs. And I could actually have done that on my design as well. But uh, that's what the real deal looks like. Now there's a ton of different styles and sizes. But they all do the same thing. They help take the slop out of the uh, contact between the actual nut and the threaded rod when it's traveling in opposite directions so that it takes up that slop. Okay, let me get this on the table and we'll, we'll look at it closer. All right, so here's an actual sample of the anti-backslash nuts that I made for my homemade CNC machine. This material is actually a piece of a cutting board. I actually went to like Walmart and bought a piece of cutting board because I didn't have any Delrin on hand. That's typically what you use is a plastic that is self lubricating and a cutting board has those characteristics. So these are pretty easy to make. You just take yourself some cutting board and you cut it in squares on your table saw. It cuts pretty easy. And then you wanna put some mounting holes in this piece and you want it to be bigger so that you know you can get your screws in here and mount it to your your uh, z your access and then these bolts here are threaded in both pieces I actually threaded this piece and this piece so it's just not a through hole these are actually threaded and then these screws pull it apart like that and by adjusting these bolts, I can actually put more or less tension. And like I said, this is similar to Delrin, which is uh, self-lubricating. So, you know, you're going to get a little resistance, but uh, it holds up pretty well on the wear. I've run these for quite a while and they still work good. So there you can probably tell how to make it just from looking at this one. And uh, it's not much trouble at all. Now you could put a spring in between here if you wanted and just have this, uh, you know, drilled out a little bit bigger than this screw and put a spring in between here. But I find that this design works really good and uh, I haven't had to uh, add any kind of um, 
liquid seas or anything like that on this. I just lubricate this every once in a while with just some lithium grease and it holds up just fine and I haven't had to adjust the tension in this at all once I got it set up. All right, let's go out for some final thoughts. Okay, Jim, well, I hope that helped your question about making the anti-backlash nuts. I know that kind of threw me a little bit too when I first got into this and I didn't really understand why I needed it or how to make one. But it's just a simple device to take up the slack on both ends and then put some tension in between. And in this case, I'm doing it with the tension of two, two uh, small machine screws. But you could use a spring. I hope that helps. Thanks for the question. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please leave us a thumbs up and a comment if you wish. If you have your own question that you would like answered, please head over to the gurubrewshow.com website, click on the Ask a Tech link, and leave a question, and maybe we'll answer it in an upcoming show. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.